हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर आशुतोष अग्रवाल वेलकम टू द सेशन ऑफ एमसीक्यूज रिलेटेड टू द न्यूनिटोलॉजी बेसिक्स एंड रिसेसिटेशन सो मूविंग ऑन टू द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑल आर द इंडिकेशंस फॉर इंसर्शन ऑफ एंडोट्रेकियल ट्यूब इन यूनिट एक्सेप्ट राइट सो जस्ट वी वांट टू नो व्हेन शुड द एंडोट्रेकियल ट्यूब बी इंसर्टेड नाउ फर्स्ट इज heart rate remains less than 100 and is not increasing after positive pressure ventilation with a face mask right we all know that whenever there is apnea or the heart rate is less than 100 or particularly the child is newborn is gasping we start is the positive pressure ventilation and after this we monitor the heart rate and is still the heart rate is less than 100 per minute we go for the ventilation corrective steps we go for the ventilation corrective steps and in the ventilation corrective steps if you remember that is mr sopa where the a stands for the alternative airway so that means alternative airway means either endotracheal tube or laryngeal mask so this definitely is an indication before starting chest compression this is an indication and diaphragmatic hernia bag and mask ventilation is contraindicated and if bag and mask ventilation is contraindicated we need to put a endotracheal tube but in the labored breathing we start with the cpap so the right answer to this question is the labored breathing endotracheal tube is not inserted moving on to the question number 2 in a newborn heart rate is not improving after giving iv epinephrine next step in the management is you have given epinephrine which can be given by three routes intravenous route intraosseous route intratracheal route and still the heart rate is not improving so you need to rule out two things in the child either you need to rule out pneumothorax or you need to rule out hypovolemia so you need to rule out pneumothorax you need to rule out hypovolemia this is the things to be ruled out so out of these choices being given here you need to rule out pneumothorax and which can be ruled out by the trans illumination test this can be ruled out by the trans illumination test so this is the simple answer here after epinephrine you need to rule out pneumothorax you need to rule out hypovolemia question number 3 an intubated term newborn with respiratory distress suddenly becomes blue already intubation was done and suddenly becomes blue what things particularly we should rule out is and this you can basically remember by the dope where d stands for the displaced tube might be the endotracheal tube is displaced o stands for the obstructed tube there might be secretions which are obstructing the tube p stands for the pneumothorax might be the child has developed the pneumothorax and e stands for the equipment failure e stands for the equipment failure so here the best answer is any of the above can be the cause for the child suddenly becoming cyanosed during neonatal resuscitation chest compression were given for 30 seconds and still the heart rate is below 60 per minute discussion to give epinephrine was taken it can be given by all of the following route definitely this can be given by intravenous route can be given by intraosseous route can be given by intratracheal route but it is not given by the intra arterial route and whenever you say intravenous we always mean is the central vein that is it is given by the central umbilical vein that is there is and in the intravenous and the intraosseous the dose is 0.2 ml per kg and in the intratracheal the dose is 1 ml per kg moving on to the next question true regarding small for gestational age is now small for gestational age is something 
द डायग्नोसिस इज मेड एट बर्थ वी आर मेकिंग द डायग्नोसिस एट बर्थ सो डायग्नोसिस इज मेड एट बर्थ इन दिस कंडीशन वट वी से बर्थ वेट और लेंथ इज लेस देन टेंथ परसेंटाइल लेस देन टेंथ परसेंटाइल सो मोमेंट आई से दिस द फर्स्ट चॉइस इज रॉन्ग डायग्नोज बाई अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी नो आई यू जी आर इज डायग्नोज ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी दिस कैन बी फिजियोलॉजिकल और पैथोलॉजिकल एब्सोलूटली राइट दिस कैन बी फिजियोलॉजिकल एंड वेन वी से फिजियोलॉजिकल वट इट मीन्स इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली स्मॉल इट बेसिकली मीन्स इज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली स्मॉल If the parents are small, child can be small, and this can be pathological also, right? So out of the choices given, the choice C is correct. This can be physiological or pathological. Vitamin K should not be given intramuscularly at birth in the following. Ideally speaking, vitamin K should always be given. The point is this, right? Vitamin K should be given at birth. it is given at birth in the normal child what we say you are giving is 1 mg if it is a extremely low birth weight child the dose is 0.5 mg so child will be an exclusive breastfeed definitely should be given mother has taken multivitamins nothing right vitamin child has got bleeding disorder still in all of these conditions you should give vitamin k so we are asking should not be given it is none of the above none of the above here 27 weeks baby is delivered by spontaneous preterm labor in the delivery room which of the following should be done first now what you need to understand in the extremely preterm child in the extremely preterm child you do not dry the child at birth that is the only point here we do not dry the child at birth so whenever the child is born we basically take the child in a plastic bag and you cover it up to the neck and then basically you put on a cap and you place the child under the radiant warmer so the only point what we want to say here is that in a extremely preterm child extremely preterm means less than 28 weeks of gestation we do not dry the child at birth that is the only point here so this question was framed keeping this point in mind keeping this point in mind that place the baby in a sterile plastic bag up to the neck cover the head and place under the radiant warmers moving on to the next one regarding the newborn skull which of the following statement is true posterior fontanel closes anterior not true this is absolutely sta wrong statement if you see the closer of the fontanel it is posterior then it is sphenoidal then it is mastoid and finally it is anterior you can simply remember the first three by the psm and this posterior this basically closes by 2 months this closes by 2 to 6 months this closes by 6 to 18 months this closes by 18 to 24 months right so this is not true skull is made up of three bones separated by sutures not true if you see particularly there is a frontal bone which you can say here there is parietal bones temporal bones occipital bone so this is not correct cephal hematoma does not cross suture line absolutely right cephal hematoma normally do not crosses the suture line and normal ofc at birth is not 30 to 32 30 to 32 we consider it to be 30 to 35 cm so out of the choices given the choice number c is correct that cephal hematoma does not cross the suture line normal amniotic fluid production and adequate renal function is not required in the fetus for which of the following remember it's a very good very good question amniotic fluid is required for intrauterine growth that is definitely required it is required for maintenance of temperature this is required for development of lungs you simply see which is the most common cause of death in oligohydramnios pulmonary hypoplasia so if there is oligohydramnios if there is oligohydramnios there is pulmonary hypoplasia so for the development of lungs 
what is basically required amniotic fluid is required amniotic fluid is also basically prevents the child from the trauma but this is not required for the excretion of the waste products that is the thing to be remembered here required for intrauterine growth required for maintaining the temperature required for development of lungs and also this decreases the chances of traumatic injury to the fetuses moving on to the last question fluid requirement in the preterm child and the term child in the first 24 hours after birth is right basically you need to understand in a preterm child chances of insensible water loss is more so if there is chances of insensible water loss which is more they require more fluid on day one so day one uh, basically in a preterm child the amount of fluid required is 80 ml per kg per day and in a term child this is required is 60 ml per kg per day so the right answer here is the choice number c so these were some of the MCQs which are related to the topic of Neonatology Basics and Resuscitation. I hope you have liked the questions. Thanks.